Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you what was my path on becoming a data scientist. So how did I become a data scientist and what were the hurdles that I basically faced. When I say hurdles, what are the ups and downs that I usually faced while going through the path towards the data scientist trip. So, initially whenever I started, when I started my career uh, after completing my B.Tech, that is Bachelor of Engineering in Computer Science, I just got placed in one company, luckily. And then I, I, I got trained in .NET. I, I was working for two years as a .NET developer. So initially my career started as a .NET developer where I was trained in that particular company for three months. And then I was put, into, put up into some projects. Then after, after some amount of, some period of time, one of the projects that I remember in .NET that I had done was with respect to a CMS tool, that is Content Management System. Along with the Content Management System, I basically created a website which was able to do some personalization. Now, once I did a personalization, right? So I had some of the friends who, some of my friends who were doing their master's degree in basically in some of the premium institutes. Uh, so I just went and showed them, okay, this is the website we developed. And when I showed them the personalization stuff, and they were basically doing their masters on AI, that is artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning. So. That was the that was when my life got completely changed. They explained to me that this personalization stuff is basically called as you know it can be done with the help of machine learning, and in short, it actually behaves like an AI application. Now that was the time when I got a brisk idea about what is machine learning all about. So I started learning. I got more interested. I also heard some of the terms from him saying that yes, with the help of machine learning, you can do a lot of predictions. And how that is basically happening, it is based on the data, uh, data that is being collected by the companies, by other institutes and all. So that was a point of time where I started learning about uh, data science, machine learning, you know, AI, deep learning. And that was all self-study, you know, that was all self-study. I was trying to block the, because of the help of, uh, because of the help of the internet, I was, explore, I was able to explore a lot of stuff regarding to AI ML. My friends also supported me for some time, but later on, once uh, the boat started sailing, I was able to control the boat till the end. That basically is still now. Now, the major thing that you need to understand that why why there is a need for technology, why there is a need that you should be adapted to change the technology. So, guys, always remember, we people all working in the IT sector, right? Let it be in any technologies, okay? So usually the technologies will be in this triangular shape. I'll just explain you what this triangular shape basically means. Now, remember the base of the triangular is quite big, right? So here are the technologies that are basically legacy technologies, old technologies. And when, when the technology is old, many people will be working over here. But as we go towards the top of the triangle, you'll be seeing that there will be very less number of people who will be working on the newer technologies. Right? So, now just imagine this particular triangle and this base is becoming a little bit smaller and finally we reach to the pointed place. Always remember, whenever technology comes up, right, and there will be very less number of people who will be working into this. Right? Now, data science, machine learning, many people are uh, doing the transition to that particular career. But just imagine initially when it started, this, there were very less number of people who were working now. Now, you should always remember that you should be adaptive to change your technology. If you don't change, one day, this base will get smaller. You know, it may happen that this base may get cut. This will come like this and still newer technologies will come and this will become more pointed. Right? And as usual, there will be less number of people. We should always try to be in this region, this particular region. And that is what my friends actually told me when they were doing their master degree and I was very much interested in understanding how machine learning, deep learning works. And finally, uh, after doing one or two projects on machine learning, uh, I, I luckily got the chance in my previous companies to work uh, five years back and because of that I, I am like currently I am working as a lead data scientist which is, uh, I feel very happy about it. And whatever decision I took, I think it was the right decision altogether. Now. Now, what are the hurdles that I usually faced uh, while becoming this particular data scientist? One of the main advantage thing that I worked in .NET technology, right? So when I was working in .NET technology, I had the basic idea of programming. 
and since I come from a computer science background, programming I was pretty much comfortable. Now the next thing is that when I was transitioning to the data science domain, at that time there were a lot of things to study, like statistics. Okay, I'll just give you one example of statistics. Uh, statistics I had seen till you know 11th or 12th standard and engineering, but I did not just understand the main practical purpose of that particular term. Like yes, I used to learn about mean, median, mode, all those kind of concepts. I used to I used to hear about normal distribution and all those things in college days, but I did not understand the main practical purpose of those. And after learning the data science domain, right? I after I went into the data science domain, I understood what is the main use of statistics. Okay, now. Uh, when I was learning data science, you know, and I hope you have seen many of my videos in data science and machine learning, deep learning. Uh, what I try to do is that I try, the reason I teach, the reason I put videos in the YouTube channel is basically, you know, to build up my confidence and I love teaching also. Okay. I, I, I always love teaching. I try to share knowledge with the people, with everyone in short. Now the next thing is that why do I upload videos more in status, uh, more in, uh, more regarding machine learning and deep learning is that the the most important thing is that I learn more by uploading those videos in YouTube for you all. How? I'll tell you. As soon as I upload some videos, right, you wonderful people, you all subscribers, what you do is that once you like that particular concept, you ask some difficult questions to me in the comment box, right? And at that is the time. If I know that, I'll definitely create the video then and there. But if I don't know that, it helps me to explore more. Because the questions that you all ask, it is very, very important questions. Because that are the problems faced by you, right? Who are entering into this data science domain. And it may be that I have never worked in that particular problem, right? So what kind of problems that you all ask, basically in the comment box, that helps me to gather more knowledge. That helps me to explore this particular domain a lot. And because of this, you know, I'm able to build, build that growing momentum, growing growth of knowledge with respect to the data science domain. I also teach uh, a lot of people through this particular YouTube channel and they like all the videos, right? They almost like all the videos. Some people will be saying some bad things, but I do not take it as bad. You know, I basically think that, okay, I'm a human. I may make mistakes, right? But it is always good that it helps me to explore more and it helps me to give the right idea that right knowledge about this particular subject. Now, the other hurdle was that I basically... Uh, the statistics main application part, I did not know when, when we are thinking in terms of data, right? I did not know that. So that hurdle, it was a kind of hurdle, but I tried to overcome it by learning more things, you know, about statistics. As you know, the internet, because of the internet, I was able to do a lot of research on statistics by my own. I don't have a master degree. I don't have any PhD, but yes, I try to learn next. I like learning. I like learning whenever a new thing comes up. I love learning it. I, I try to see that particular, I try to explore. And how do I explore? Okay, now let me just give you an idea that how you can explore. I know you, you are planning to do a transition towards the data science. There will be many hurdles that will come up. First is the programming language. Now you know that a person from any domain can become a data scientist. And to become a data scientist, the first thing he should know one programming language at least. Right? With the help of one programming language, learning Python, when I say Python and as an example, it will be very easy, but you should have some basic knowledge of some programming language, right? Now, once you know Python, right, there are various life cycle of a data science project and uh, data science project itself, right? It, it is basically data gathering, feature engineering, feature selection, model creation, you know, model deployment, all these kind of stuff are there. And now after you learn the program, right, you need to know some other tools. So when I say some other tools, that basically means the libraries, different types of libraries in Python. The main thing about the library, see, you can basically use a library, the library will do your work, but you will not know the theoretical purpose behind those libraries, right? So you should always be curious to know what that particular library, what that particular function is basically doing whenever you're using it in your code. So you should always try to understand these things. Once you're able to understand, guys, then only you'll be growing your knowledge like anything, right? Now. The next thing is that whenever you ask me some question, suppose I don't know, what do I do? You, you tell me that, please make a video. Suppose if you say me that, uh, please make a video on feature selection. Okay, fine. I can make a video on feature selection. Now, as soon as I got, got that question, now there are various ways of doing feature selection. And what, how, how, after taking that particular question, what I do is that I explore those things. 
I explore those things I put up in the videos and and that same thing after learning I'll apply it in my practical purpose whenever I get a chance in my projects right and I continuously work as a lead currently I'm working as a lead data scientist so whenever I get that particular chance that learned thing that I've got you know and I always remember learning is is a continuous process it should never be stopped whenever you get a very good technique try to apply that in any projects that you get okay so that was a path of becoming a data scientist the main thing uh, that I the first hurdle that I spoke about is, was with respect to statistics, you know, and a lot of concepts in statistics. Now, apart from that, there's also, you have to get the knowledge of maths, okay? Now, I know if you are from an engineering background, right, you probably have done engineering till your BTEC, right? Uh, so, basic, basically, Bachelor of Engineering. Now, remember, when I was studying maths at that time, right, uh, during my 12th standard, my BTEC first year, right? At that time, I used to, okay, I'll just give you a basic, basic example. I used to learn about derivatives. I know derivatives are basically used to calculate slope. Okay, so this is fine. The practical, the, the theoretical part, I, I, I was able to understand. But really, the real, the, I mean, the theoretical part I was able to understand, you know, and you know how to do a derivative by using maths equations and all. Okay, you just have to remember the formula, what will be the derivative of something, you'll basically be able to find it. But the next thing was that, how do I apply this derivative in a real world scenario? And that is where, when I learned deep learning, right? When I started learning deep learning, well, over there when I heard again the derivative, now then I got the clear idea what was actually happening. Because it is, the whole machine learning is based on statistics and maths, guys. Simple, if you, if you just take machine learning, right? Those are the simple math, uh, you know, different types of calculation that are happening. Okay, if you take deep learning, most of the things are matrix multiplication that are basically happening. You know, so main thing that you need to understand is that you need to have one programming knowledge, right? Then you need you need to ha have that habit of learning more, exploring more. You know, there are a lot of materials, guys. People from Stanford put up their lectures in YouTube, right? You can basically use that. Initially, I started that. I'm just talking about five years back. I'm I'm overall my total experience is somewhere around eight years. Okay, so if I just go five years back. Uh, that time, the uh, very popular courses, you know, in YouTube were put up freely. Okay, uh, the best example I'll say you Coursera, right? So Coursera, they had actually put up free videos, but in Coursera there was still one problem that the the lecturers who were actually explaining, right? They were they were quite uh, the intellectual level was quite high. They were PhD guys, so uh, you know people uh, who are not you know just done the BTEC and who is who's very new to that particular subject will take some time to grasp that particular concept and that is what is learning pattern you know initially you will not understand but in the second time if you see it again you will definitely understand the purpose of opening this particular channel that is uh, regarding this ml ai uh, on my name so what i was that i was trying to uh, bridge up this particular gap i was trying to you know make sure that People who have, who, have, who have not done their master's, who have not done their PhD, right? I should try to find out a way where I can actually teach you. Uh, and that is what I did. The theoretical, if you see my deep learning playlist, right? I made sure that with the help of each and every diagrams, uh, you know, with, with the help of simple equations, I've explained each and everything. And now that is bridging the gap, you know? The, the intellectual level, my intellectual level and your intellectuals, level i know like it may if i have not done my masters and phd i'll basically talk in a lower level so that uh, you all basically understand all this thing and that is the main purpose behind it and once i became a data scientist uh, i still remember uh, 5 years back when i became a data scientist 5 5 and a half years back uh, the first project that i was doing at that time also i was not perfect you know again i said it is a learning process it is a continuous process and as we go ahead we get to know different different things Okay, and the main reason why I have opened this particular channel is basically to bridge those gaps. Okay, and you all are, you wonderful subscribers are also doing a wonderful job by asking very difficult questions to me. Because that is actually helping me to explore more, get those solutions and apply those solutions in my real world scenarios whenever I get a chance. And thanks to you all, oh, wonderful people. Uh, in short, this was my path. Initially, I was a .NET developer, slowly. Whenever I got chance, I got to know about ML, AI, deep learning, and I slowly moved, sl started learning a lot. You know, I, as I said, the learning is a continuous process and you should never, never stop. And that is how uh, currently, uh, when I'm eight years experience, always remember this particular triangle also, guys, you need to be adaptive. 
tomorrow suppose data science you know i don't know like how many people may come again this base will become a little bit bigger right so again you should start exploring for new technologies as i am currently exploring on blockchain also simultaneously my plan is that how can i use blockchain plus machine learning and do something more interesting and creative thing and that i'm learning through my own okay i have to give at least some amount of time for those learning process and try to try to invest at least 1 hour in a day for learning something new that will definitely help you in your career transition in your career growth always remember guys it is a company there will be always lot of competitions you know and when you say ai ml don't think that we are automating something right yes we are automating something right but always remember company cost we are trying to reduce them by using ai stuffs or creating some new products right we are trying to increase their prof- uh, business we are trying to increase their profits right so always remember you have to become skilled to, in order to come over here right legacy so if you want a better salary you want a better hike you have to be in this particular region right otherwise in the legacy system you will be stagnant you will be having the same salary for almost many years because there are a lot of people over here you have to start taking that transition plan move in the top of the this particular triangle uh, in the tip of the triangle be somewhere here you know trying to explore more and get to that what you require okay and i i have heard a lot of questions from people um make sure guys make that learning pattern never give up that is the main thing never give up keep on learning i know things becomes difficult but if you continue that same process always remember you will be able to do it okay so i hope this was a pretty small idea about how i became a data scientist from a dotnet developer i know many of our viewers are from different different technologies like java dotnet it may be uh, php and other programming languages yes it is possible guys i have done it you also can do it right so i'll see you all in the next video coming up with more interesting tutorials uh thank you one and all please to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed please share with all your friends whoever require this kind of help i'll see you all in the next video god bless you all